Welcome to the On-Premise IT Roundtable Podcast, the only show that dares to be both on-topic and on-location, or on-premise and on-premises. Each time we meet, we bring together IT luminaries to discuss a single topic. In this episode, our topic is Back That Sass Up. Before we begin, let's quickly meet who's on the panel today. Hi, I'm Athar Beg. Uh, you can find me on Twitter's uh, and at Athar Beg, and I also have a blog, atharbeg.com. That's easy. W. Curtis Preston, and you can find me at WC Preston on the Twitter, and my blog is backupcentral.com. Yeah, I'm Matt Calloway. You can find me on Twitter at underscore V. Calloway. I've got a blog, and you can find me at vcalloway.com. So, fellas, today's discussion is about backup, and specifically backup of SaaS, because backup has been very simple for the longest time. You got servers or virtual machines full of data, and you just dump them to disk or tape or both or whatever the case may be, uh, because you own basically everything. And then things started moving into the cloud, specifically something as a service. You know, you manage basically none of it anymore. You just consume it, uh, and with that, there's questions around. Well, how do you protect that data and make sure it's available? And well, should you? I mean, shouldn't it be the responsibility of who's ever providing that service for you to guarantee that the data that they're holding is available for you at all times? I think Curtis had some very strong opinions <laughs> on this, so why don't we start with you? Yes, I think you should back up all the things. That's been my you know, modus operandi for the last 25 years, and I'm not changing. I, I, I wouldn't have any problem with a vendor, a SaaS vendor, backing up the data on my behalf, but I would want a copy of that data. Um, but my true problem is none of the vendors are actually backing up the data. When I think of all the main, like the, the big three, none of them are actually backing up your data. Okay, and, so yeah. you're saying if they could back it up for me in a, a fashion that was that met my needs, my requirements, my RTOs, my RPOs, whatever the case may be, that would be good enough. I don't mind that they're still holding the keys to the kingdom. No, I would still want a copy. Okay. Because, because I'm me and I want the backup and that's what I do, so. Okay, so if they gave you a copy uh, in their own format or are you saying give me something that's readable? I, well, I, that's, that's a different discussion. I just, I, just, <laughs> okay, I want to okay. be able to restore it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to, you know, yeah, I, I haven't had a good record with, the, the, it, actually before SaaS, there really isn't the, you know, Solaris didn't back up itself, right? Oracle didn't back up itself. It had a tool that you could use to back up. And, and so for, I don't understand why suddenly, because it's now SaaS, that system should back up for me, so, right? And that's... And I think that may, that may be your thing. Author, yeah, you had basically, you think it's a reasonable expectation to, to expect a service provider to provide that data protection as well, right? That's right, because, um, well, as architects, when we are designing a system, and okay, before SaaS, there used to be everything used to be on premises. Um, and we said, okay, like your example that, yes, semantic, or they, <laughs> they didn't back up themselves or Oracle systems. However, now we are at, in a SaaS environment where the storage and all the network is actually provided by the provider. <coughs> now, they have a product. We always, when designing a system, we used to have a backup provision. So why should it be any different where we don't have any control over the, the environment? So the SaaS service, they know their infrastructure better. They're storing the data. They know, say, the database or whatever they have to store that data. Data is key. They shouldn't be losing it. So who better to create a backup environment for that? Also, I mean, I would say data locality as well. That if someone actually has data, so, so you have an environment, you don't necessarily have another backup environment. So you go for a backup provider, for example, who, are, who backs up a SaaS service. They may not be in the same region or the same country. They may not have a platform there. Whereas if the SaaS provider is providing, is storing your data, they have the storage there. They have the provision to back it up in the same environment as well. So why not? All SaaS companies can do that. Um, so so I, I think just because they are not doing it doesn't mean that's the right thing. They should be. Okay, so a little bit of differing opinions here. Matt, what's your take on this? Whose so, responsibility is it for this? Well, data? so while I agree with, with Anther on this, is I, I think there should be an option. Uh, and I, I have di different opinions of, you know, 
if my data is, is, is sitting in, in your cloud in a, in a SaaS offering, you as that company should make sure that my data is available and that it will not disappear, right? So there's, there's I, I have that thought process. I do have another one of, well, maybe that's an add-on and the customer should ultimately be responsible if that add-on is not included, like for regulatory reasons or you know, you've got to you've got to test restores X amount of years, and you've got to do it in another site. So you have flexibility. If I go back on the other side, is this SaaS company backing up to the same infrastructure? That to me is a risk. Maybe I don't want to take that. So I think we really probably need to dig into the details of what do we really want, or is it a one size fits all? I don't think that that's the case. Well, what what do we really want? Let's take one thing for example. Restorability is something that you mentioned, Curtis, mm -hmm. but if I get that data out of my SaaS provider, it's most likely in a format that that platform understands. Even if it's something I can read, can I do anything with, with that data without the SaaS platform to put it back on? Is it useful to me at that point if I backed it up uh, using my own means instead of relying on the SaaS provider to do it? I would say probably a backup of, let's say, Salesforce okay. would be as useful um, if Salesforce disappeared tomorrow, mm -hmm. as a backup of an Oracle database would be if Oracle wasn't available, right? Because Oracle database backups are no good unless you have an Oracle database to restore to, right? Yeah. Uh, but, unless uh, you do like an export, which is a different, that's not really a backup, it's more of an archive, right? True. Uh, yeah. um, but I, 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 I do know that in most of the cases, most of the backup and restore of SaaS apps are really only work within those apps for sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in that case, why do you want that backup? Because you still are dependent on that SaaS platform to get any value out of that data, right? Because things, because things happen to your data that don't have anything to do with the platform, right? So uh, you, you as an account get hacked, right? So I, I, I don't see, again, we'll pick on Salesforce. I don't see Salesforce going away anytime soon. Right? I don't see the, the, the service may go out for, I don't know, a day like it did a few weeks ago. Right? Mm -hmm. Th that absolutely will happen um, and can happen, I, but I don't see the, the entire platform going away. Mm -hmm. But what I am really worried about is, again, pick on Salesforce, um, if I have a rogue admin that goes in and just messes up all my phone numbers. Right and just deletes all my phone numbers in my entire record. If I don't have a backup of that data, I now have a completely worthless Salesforce database. Well, what if what if we talk about versioning, which isn't quite backups, which, which they don't have. Okay. Right, but um, versioning is in Office three sixty five. But then the question is. Well, we're talking about Salesforce SaaS, SaaS as well, like specific. Well, no. What. Well, I'm gonna hear it mask. Yeah, like like SaaS specific, right? Yeah. So like Office 365 does have versioning, so that would solve the problem that you just described. One I, of them. I, I think I, I think I, we are not disputing the fact that uh, there should be a backup. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's but who's responsible the, for it. My point is that that backup and the responsibility of it should lie with the SaaS provider to, gen by default, have this mechanism to not only store your data but also be able to back it up in a way that is restorable with versioning, of course. Um, but, and depending on, so that service should be provided by that size provider. Yeah, it's, we shouldn't yeah. necessarily need other providers to provide it. So here's my question, why? Why do you think that? Why, we didn't think that of, of Solaris. We didn't think that of Oracle. But that's, that's exactly what I was saying earlier, that, that those were on-premises environment and okay. those times were different. Because you had your own environment, mm -hmm. you basically decided what infrastructure you put in, invest in, how many backups you're going to take, externalize. Those days were different. Now you are in a SaaS environment. It's mm -hmm. an environment you don't have any control over. You can only provide the service either that provider provides it for you or the SaaS providers like um, uh, many other companies that provide that service to back up that, that SaaS provider. Why can't that same service be provided by the provider itself knowing the data or the structure themselves, because who better to create that environment to be restorable? Two answers to that question. 
One is because they're not any good at it, and that's a really important answer, right? They don't have the core competency, right? Backup is a separate discipline, separate idea, separate way of doing things. And again, don't want to pick on companies, and I'm not going to, but I have incidences where these SaaS companies, even with the things that they have done, they've shown that they don't know what they're doing with backup. So why would I want to trust them with that? But that's my point, that you know, those companies are typically of a size that they can actually invest. Uh, just because they are not good at it doesn't mean they can't invest in people who can create that backup capability. They have the resources to do that. Mm -hmm. Just because they are not doing it doesn't mean they shouldn't. That should be their responsibility to start with. And isn't that the point of cloud computing as a whole and SaaS specifically that we're going to do everything for you so you don't have to worry about these operational problems that you used to have to. We don't expect AWS to back up our servers, our VMs for us. But that is clear that because that's infrastructure as a service and they actually have this support um, responsibility model. Um, so, so if you're creating infrastructure, you're still not providing a SaaS service. So, okay. So, so we are talking SaaS services. Right. Yeah, and we are. In which case, it's hands off. Okay. So, so, so here's a question. So, um, I think it's a different discussion as to whether they should. Oh, we're going to get to you. We're going to yeah. get to you. Yeah. Here's a question. Let's give this to you. <clears throat> whether they should or shouldn't, they're not today. So, so what do we do? Right. The, what I don't understand is there are no SLAs for backup for. Office 365, for Salesforce, for G Suite, none of them. So why does the majority of the world think it's okay to just, you know, whether they should or shouldn't, they're not. So why, why isn't this a bigger deal to people? I, I think it's education, people not asking the right questions. And it's just kind of that assumption that, you know, you have that insurance, right? Kind of like a bank, you're insured up to X amount. Yeah. Um, those companies talk about insurance policies um, recently going through this, and it's like, well, I, if I don't have my data, the money is not any good to me. Um, but I think it needs to be brought up, and people need to be educated about it. And if we can't natively back that up, and it's not within the confines of the you know the requirements we want, then allow us to back it up the way that we need to. Right. That's exactly. Yeah. You exactly right because. Um, if you look at real world as well, take some other example like insurance. If people don't insure themselves, not because they are hoping something to happen, <laughs> yeah. they, they insure yeah. it just in case it happens, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. so, so you take backups and it, it's, education is the thing that they, a lot of people wouldn't know. So consumer of, uh, say, Exchange 365, they will use it as an email system. They mm -hmm. wouldn't think about backups. Because right. general people don't think about those things. We as IT people do, but they don't. So they don't really ask those questions. But as a principle, mm -hmm. as architects, so for example, of a, mm -hmm. the first thing we think about is that if, they, if our system is going to have some, any data, we must back it up. We must externalize it, right. all those things. Right. And hence my point that those systems have been developed, the SaaS services have come about, but they are not backing up the data themselves. They should have been, as a first thing, should have thought of that while architecting the service and offering it to their customers. Yeah, and, and I can't, well, I mean, I somewhat disagree because I still, you know, the core competence thing, but, but my concern is that, for example, you mentioned versioning, right? So Office 365 has versioning. Um, uh, Salesforce has a, a recycle bin, right? Yep. It only stores deleted items, doesn't store converted items, but... Um, they have these tools that have backup-like features, but mm -hmm. all they really are is additional records in the same database. They're not backups. They're just other records in the same database, right? Changes? They're, they're just, it, it's the equivalent of like if you had an Oracle database and you updated a record in it's one table, logs. it just copies it to another, no, not a log, just another record within the same database. And that's how, that's how these, you know, Office 365 is, they have a lot of great features, data protection features, 
but they're all built around this idea of just storing it in another part of the same database, right? The, like the recycle bin, for example. It's just, it's the record's still there. It just got a flag that's no longer over here. It's over there. It's not a backup. It's just we're you know we're storing it right over here, right next to it. So it's on the not only in the same infrastructure. It's literally in the same database, and that's what these guys do, and so many people, even IT people, are looking at that and they go, oh, that, that, that's fine, right? And that, that bothers me. And I'm gonna take it back to the, the premise, once again. It was not, because there might be people out there who think that, oh yeah, I've got data in a SaaS service now, I don't need to worry about backup, they're just completely ignorant of the fact that maybe that data is not protected. The premise is, who should be responsible for that backup, should it be, the customer themselves, or should it be the SaaS provider because they're supposed to do everything for me? And so I think we need to kind of wrap it up and get some final thoughts around that premise itself. So let's start with you, Matt. Final thoughts. Final thoughts is I'm going with SaaS provider needs to provide a backup solution. And I'm, I'm, I'm well, for the sake of this, this podcast, that's, that's, that's my final answer. Okay, final <laughs> answer. What, was he right, Regis? Does he win the million dollars? <laughs> I, 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 I'm fine with them providing a backup solution. I just want the world to acknowledge that there isn't currently one and that all of the major SaaS providers have what they call a shared responsibility model. Your data is your, look at all of them, your data is your responsibility. That is the way all of them work. Look at your SLAs. The word backup isn't in there, right? Um, and I just want to, whether, whether they should or shouldn't, I don't, that's, that's a, for me, that's a discussion for another time. I just want people to acknowledge that they aren't currently doing it. Well, I, I would say that, first of all, this, that the premise is for this discussion, I think, uh, SaaS provider, and plus SaaS means that you're having software as a service. Uh, and if you're taking that service, the data is going into that service, it has to be backed up. And who better to back it up than the provider? So, so yeah, I, I totally am standing my ground and say, yes. So I'm, I'm outvoted two to one is what it's a. Well, <laughs> it seems that I've been able to convince. But we have unanimity. <laughs> oh. Everybody needs to protect their bit backup, their data in the cloud. There needs to be a backup. That has to be. <laughs> we, we all agree on that. Oh, we do agree on that. There needs to be a backup, so. yes. That should about do it for this episode of the On-Premise IT Roundtable. If you enjoyed the discussion, remember to subscribe, rate, and review the show in iTunes since that really helps our visibility, and to share the show with your friends. This podcast is brought to you by gestaltit.com, your home for IT coverage from across the enterprise. For show notes and more episodes, go to gestaltit.com slash podcast. Thanks. We'll see you next time.